raised here in Lahanta after graduating from Lahanta High School. Say it. Go Tigers! <laughs> I, was, I was really going to leave that out. She attended the University of Northern Colorado in Greeley and earned her bachelor's degree no in secondary education with an emphasis in theater. Shortly after finishing college, Molly volunteered with the English Open Doors program and taught English for a year at public high school in Porto Macalas, Chile. After the school year finished in Chile, she moved back to her hometown of Lahanta, where she began working for the East Otero School District. And Molly taught language arts there for three years before deciding to pursue her master's degree in school counseling. She then graduated from Adam State University with her counseling degree in 2016. She worked as a school counselor for Lahanta Schools for eight years before taking on the position of the mental health counselor at Otero College this past summer. Outside of work, Molly and her husband Sean. Where is Sean? are busy raising two sassy little girls from her words, not mine. She enjoys spending time with her family and friends traveling in Christmas, as well as helping and performing with the local community. Everyone, please help me welcome Molly Moore. Thank you. All right, I'm not using a mic because when I get nervous, I shake. I did not want the microphone to be shaking like that. So I'm going to use my teacher theater voice and project for you. All right, so today, when I thought about what I wanted to talk about, uh, on my little poster, I think it says something about hearing about uh, how uh, my passion for helping others. And so that's kind of the theme of this, um, thinking about how I got to where I am today. Because if you had told me when I was a freshman in high school or a freshman in college, even a senior in college, that 20 or so years from now, I would be a mental health counselor living back in La Hunta, I would have said, oh, hell no. That would have been to do. It just didn't make sense. So the questions today that I'll go over, just a little bit about who I am and my interests, um, and then the big question of how did I get here? So these are very big questions, right? Who am I? How did I get here? We're not getting that deep into it. And then um, what insight I can offer you when you're thinking about what careers you want to go into after. And all of you here who already have careers. <laughs> Great. Right. All right, so a little bit about me. I am just a small town girl. That's what I am. So I am a Lahaita native. This is a picture of me in our tiger orange when I graduated, my best friend. Um, I think it's important to know that I'm a big sister to three brothers because uh, I think that's shaped a lot of my personality, just being the oldest sibling um, and then being the only girl, too. Um, and then another important thing to know is that I love food. Okay? I love cooking, I love trying new foods, um, I love reading about food. I have a lot of magazine subscriptions to food-related things, and I also just like reading menus. I do that, so I will get online and like whatever restaurants we're looking at going to, my friends know. Send me the list of where we're thinking about, and I'll look at the menus, and then I'll tell them where we should go. <laughs> it's a favorite pastime. So there's a couple, there's a picture of me eating some food right there. Those are crepes. I was in Paris. So that goes into the next thing to know about me, is that I love to travel. Um, and I've lived in two other countries, and I've visited a total of 13 separate countries. So for some just a couple days, some for a week or two at a time. And then, uh, oh, so there's the picture of Paris, and then that's a trip that my husband, who decided not to come today, <laughs> that's a picture of us uh, at Masha's Keep Show. That's where, for our honeymoon, we did a 10, we did a trek, a five-day trek through the Andes to Machu Picchu. And then um, I'm a drama queen. As in, I love theater, so that's also shaped a lot of my career path and thinking 
about what I wanted to do was that how my love of perform. And then finally, my people are my world, so that's a very important thing to know. Uh, I have a very close-knit family. I have a small group of friends that we have been through a lot together and we're very close. I'm super loyal and my people are the world. So that's probably why I still live five blocks away from my parents. <laughs> yes. So, um, and so there's a couple pictures of uh, other pictures. That's my, those are my three handsome brothers. They aren't so little anymore. Um, and that's my mom and my oldest daughter and I at Mamma Mia. We took her for her eighth birthday. And then this summer I was in a show at the Picket Wire. And that was the first time that the girls had come to watch me. And they were so excited. Those were the pictures I chose. Okay. So in the beginning, so when I think about my career journey and how I got to where I got, there are a few... I guess three main things that kind of stick out to me from growing up. So the first one was this dream I always had of being a teacher. And so that came primarily from uh, the opportunity when I was in third grade. I had the amazing experience of having this year for my teacher, who some of you probably now know as Carol Knoll, and she was phenomenal. Um, she was so dedicated to her students. We would write in a journal every night, and she'd take home everyone's journal, and she would write a response back. And she would, at the end of the day, I know, right? <laughs> Hand out happy notes is what she called them. And I remember, like, the first time I got a happy note, I was like, okay, I will do anything for you, Mr. Hurt. Anything at all. So uh, for the longest time, from third grade on, I wanted to be a third grade teacher. That is it. Third grade teacher, that's what I'm gonna do. And then when I got to high school, um, I was able to start auditioning for the plays at our high school. I knew I wanted to be on stage. That was something I had always wanted to do. To do. My mom had taken me to numerous productions while I was growing up, but there wasn't a chance growing up here then. There is now, they have a children's theater, but. They didn't have that then, so when I got to high school, I finally got to audition for a play. And then I met the next big teacher in my life, who was Kelly Jo Smith. And she was another huge influence on me and what, um, just what I learned from her, like the passion that she had for creative arts and for sharing that with others and for helping us grow, not only as actors and actresses, but just gaining confidence and boosting us up and uh, sharing her love with us and cultivating that love then in others. And I thought, okay, that's what I wanted to do. So then I was not going to be a third grade teacher, I was going to be a theater teacher. And that's what I went off to college to do. Um, the, other, the other two big things that happened when I was in high school, uh, when I was a freshman, I had the opportunity to go with my dad and stepmom to Australia. She had a business trip there. And it was very cool. I had never been out of the country. Um, and it was neat, but it wasn't like a total culture shock. You know, it was, it was fairly similar to the Western world here. But it got me thinking, like, yeah, I like this. This is cool. I like seeing these two places. And so then, when I was a sophomore in high school, I had another opportunity to travel to Nicaragua, which is in Central America. And we went as part of like a mission group to uh, build houses after Hurricane Mitch and destroyed a lot of people there. And that was like an eye-opening paradigm shift for me because the country, it's a very poor country. Um, we were in kind of what they, they call it, like the slums or these kind of shanty towns that people were living in, you know, there's no running water, there's no heat, there's nothing to cook with. They're eating, I remember we, uh, I, I saw a kid and we were talking, my dad knew Spanish so he could translate for us. He said, what did you have for breakfast today? Like rice and beans, like that's what we always have. Rice and beans, that's what we have. So it was just a really big aha moment for me. I had a couple of 
lived in a, a lot of privilege. I was very privileged at bringing my parents. Gave us everything I could ever want. So it was the first time that I really realized, wow, like there is a whole world out here and there are people that are living an entirely different experience than I could ever imagine or that I could ever been. So that kind of uh, brought about my love for traveling and my love for listening to other people's stories, learning about where they come from, what's happened to them. Um, and not just listening, but like really realizing that, yes, that's your story and I'm not going to fight with you about it or I'm not going to say that, no, maybe it's a two fight like I'm so I see and I'm just honoring their And then the last major influence, of course, is my mom because she is... Well, she's just an incredible woman, if you know her, then you would agree. Um, but my entire life, she has always um, taught me that it is important that no matter where people come from, no matter what they look like, no matter who they love, no matter what they believe in, we treat them with kindness and we, um, we accept them. So that was important to me because I think it really laid down the foundation of being open-minded, which I am very open-minded. I try to be very non-judgmental, um, and that is something that eventually led me into this field. So having those traits, without her and that message she taught me, I don't know what I have be in this job the entire time. So those are my, my beginnings, my origins for so then moving on to kind of college, post-college, or like the middle, there, there were a few other events that happened that I again think continued to put me on this path toward a helping career um, and specifically a counseling career. So I studied abroad when I was in college and I was in Ireland. And um, the biggest takeaway from Ireland was Instead of putting us into the dorms with the other Irish students, they like literally had a dorm room that was just for international students. So I met very few Irish people, but I met a lot of other uh, European students. So this is a group of all of us that were living in the dorms. So they were, there were students from Hungary, from Finland, Spain, uh, and France. And some of us Americans. So that was fun because uh, I, I did meet some Irish students, but more than that, I met people from all over Europe and got to hear their stories. And um, we, we would have like cooking nights in the dorm, so like we made tacos and then they criticized that it was just sandwiches or something like that. When the French made their meal, it was very exciting. So, so that was just kind of sharing culture, sharing stories. And then after I graduated, um, I, I, I did the volunteer program for Chile. So I worked for a while as just a waitress, not just a waitress, but as a waitress, because I still was not quite sure that I was ready to have a grown up job and be a teacher and do all of those things. So I waitressed for a little bit and it just wasn't fulfilling, and I knew I wanted to travel there. So I found the English Open Doors program, and they basically put you with the host family in Chile, and then I taught in a Chilean public school. So I was teaching English in the high school there, so I'm working with kids in 9th through 12th grade. Um, and it was awesome, but it was also another life-changing experience. So I didn't know Spanish very well when I was down there. So I really had the opportunity to feel what, it, what it's like to not know how to communicate and how to think about like every little thing, like I would have to plan what I was going to say before I went to the grocery store. Like what might they ask me? What are the words I need to be listening for? What, how can I respond to them? Um, just the amount of pressure that I felt. And then not being able to uh, at first really connect with other people because of that language barrier. So I think that led to like some intense feelings of isolation. And then I was in a very isolated part of the country in general. Um, southern, uh, we reach Liam Hamonia, so then like the southernmost tip of Chile. So it's an 
eight hour ride, an eight hour plane ride to get to the capital city, and then it's a four hour plane ride to get to the nearest airport, and a three hour bus ride to get to where I was. And there really was nothing else around unless she took that three hour bus ride back to the bus And so I relate to any international students that come here and are in the middle of nowhere by myself, because that's very much where I was. But it was, it, was more, it was difficult at first, and then when I hit my groove, it was probably one of the best things I've ever done in my life, because I learned I could do this, you know, I could do this. And so there's a few pictures there, that's the town that I was in up at the top. Those are my students, we, part of the program that I was in, we had like a, an English debate competition across the, the nation of Chile. And the group from my little school was the regional champions and we went to the national competition. So that was very fun because quite a few of those students had never been on an airplane before. They had never been to San Chicago before, which is the capital. And then on the nationals, we got fourth place. <laughs> so that was very exciting. Okay. And then I still am in communication with quite a few but not three of those students in the room. Pretty cool too. And then that's just, although I say I was in a very rural area, I wasn't, it was also super beautiful. So something that has another quite have going for it is that you could just go spend uh, it was a huge national park right by us that we spent a lot of time hiking and tracking. Alright, so then finally, there's the teaching dream. And I kind of discovered that it wasn't what I thought it would be or it wasn't what I was looking for after school, which was very, very hard because that is all I had ever wanted to do. So it really became like a, you know, how can I be so wrong about myself? And I knew what I, what I wanted and finding out that, no, this isn't what I wanted. You were wrong. It really shook me. So I taught uh, seventh and eighth grade, and then I taught fifth grade. So there's this little picture of me and my 27 fifth graders that I have. And then this is uh, a thank you note, and I pulled that out because I didn't know at the time, but there's a little line in there that was even right. You had to write them through the end and explain why they deserve to get a Thanksgiving dinner. So the whole thing is about what I did that deserved to be But she put in there that um, Miss Johnson uh, helped me with a few personal problems, and then she didn't spell it. <laughs> there you go. That's the basis of what you're writing. Especially at the secondary level where I was. I was building the master schedule for classes. I was um, doing all the great check graduation and evals. Um, then, so all that academic things. And we're also responsible for doing these career guidance lessons and helping students choose careers. And then we're also responsible for helping them with social emotional issues is what we call it at that level, which is mental health counseling. So that's a lot. And um, 
And so towards the end, I began to feel like I'm doing all of these things, but am I doing any of it like really well? Because I'm doing so many things. And so when the job opened up here at Otero, it was focused specifically on mental health. And I liked that because for the past two years, I had been working as a school counselor for the junior senior high school, the main school in Atlanta. And the, we had opened up an alternative school in the district that I kept having to send kids to. So all of the kids that I was usually working with because they were behind in their classes or because they weren't coming to class or because they had a lot of shit going on and school was just like the last thing they were ready to do, I was having to say, okay, well, you're behind, so we're going to have you go to Tiger Trades for a little bit, get caught up on your credits, and then, um, I was, and I, I hated that. I hated having to send away these kids that I had been working with, you know. And at the time, we were actually the counselors at CTA and at the high school, and uh, no one was ever going to TTA, we just couldn't get over there. That was Tiger Trades of Happy. So they made a full-time counseling position, and I took it, and it was um, probably one of the best jobs I've ever had. Like, I loved it, loved my kids, I loved my TTA kids, I loved the staff, um, and it was very hard to choose to leave, but it was really just um, the stories that I heard from the kids that I worked with there just made me feel like I want to get better at this mental health piece. I want to, to be better at that. So that's why I decided to come to Otero. And now here, that's what I get to do. I get to listen to people's stories and listen to uh, what they're experiencing. And I don't give them advice, which is a common misconception. Counselors don't tell you what to do. But we can say here are some things that you can try, here are some reasons. This is what's happening in the brain, so maybe that can give you some insight into why you're feeling how you're feeling, or that sort of thing. Um, so, in the end, I guess, so my last thing that I had on there that I wanted to touch on, not just how I got to where I am, but then like what I would offer you to think about. And so that is, what is finding that meaning to you, right? Which is easier said than done. But one of the big things that guides my career choices is wanting work-life balance. When I was in the classroom, I did not have work-life balance. It's a very demanding job, um, teaching it. So now I do. As a counselor, I really feel like I do. I have time where I can go see, like this is a picture of my family and I when my daughter's got couple of wards at the school assembly. I was able to go and be a part of that. That's a picture of us on a family trip because it is important to me that I have time off to spend with the ones I love. So I was in a training once and one of the teachers, they asked, what's the best part about your job? And he said, June, July, and August, <laughs> which is, which sounds horrible, but it is a good thing. It's good to have time off. You should have time off so that you can spend it with your family, you can spend it with the people you love. Like, um, it's a job, it's not your whole life. So I feel like I have a good balance with that in this position. And then the other thing um, I think that's become more apparent to me the longer I live in La Junta is how important my community is. Um, and that is really what keeps me in this job, in this field, in this place because I, this community has done so much for me growing up. And I remember when I first moved back, I had been gone for about seven years, and I was waitressing. And um, I ran into a few people, and they would say, oh, Molly, you're back. We're so glad you're back. It's so great to have you back. Um, and I really felt like I belonged, you know. Um, so I love that this community embraces us. Even once we leave, you can come back. Um, and then more importantly, I just, I love seeing people that I've worked with. You know, I've known Aaliyah since she was in seventh grade, Jay too. Um, being able to watch you guys grow and become adults and become successful is so uh, rewarding. And it is really why, I, why I, I do this here. Because it's my hometown, it's my community, and 
Okay. So find your place. Okay. My last little thing is this quote. Um, and I just love it because I, I guess it's kind of my in game goal here. So it says, if every single person who has liked you in your lifetime were to light up on a map, it would create the most glitteringly beautiful network you can imagine. Throw in the strangers you've been kind to, the people you've made laugh or inspire along the way, and that star bright network of you would be an impressive sight to behold. You're so much more than you think you are. You have done so much more than you realize. You're trailing a bright pathway that you don't even know about. What a thing. What a thing indeed. So I saw this on Facebook uh, earlier in the, the school year, and one of the teachers that I mentioned in this presentation had shared it. And I just saw that and I wrote immediately. I was like, yes, your network is huge. Like, the, the lives you've touched and the people that um, you've changed and impacted. And then I just thought, well, maybe someday someone will think that of me. So that's kind of my, what drives me is just wanting to help others and give back. 